It's my brother Robert Kelly looking good like a motherfucker. How you doing, pal? Good. What's the matter? You look depressed all of a sudden. Like yeah, no, I look. Stole I, your I'm fucking. Uh, I'm good. I just got back from the gym. I'm a little getting my shit together. That's nice. A nice cigar after the fucking gym. You just work the lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, like a fucking old school Cuban. Look at you. All you need is a wig, and you could be a Cuban grandmother. You got to see those Cuban grandmothers light those fucking cigars. They don't give a fuck. The cigar outweighs them. <laughs> <laughs> Any yes. good? What type of cigar is that? Any good? Well, this is my favorite cigar on the planet Earth. Hoyo. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a limited edition 2013 the Epicure, Grand Epicure, Cuban. From what, Dominicans or Cubans? Cuban. Okay. This was nice. uh, Russell Peters, fucking sweetest guy in the world. Best dude ever. I mean, I went to his house, and he handed me a box of my favorite cigars. Fucking crazy. Who the fuck does that? Well, he's that's why he's who he is, because uh, he's as fucking great as a guy as can be. You know that. Yeah, he's as great as. Yeah, I mean, he's he's fucking. I mean, dude, that shit right there, I'll 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 die for you. Yeah, <laughs> no, fucking, that's I'll that's die. why people are the way they are with him. He called me for a favor a couple months ago. Done, you know, because I know that he's that type of motherfucker. He'll just come through for you. How are you, Rob Kelly? I'm doing good, buddy. It's good to see you. It's been a long fucking time. I'm an old man now. I haven't seen you in twenty fucking years. It's been a long fucking time. Since Houston, dude. our Houston days with Pete. Remember? Down. Do you remember fucking, do you know I just saw him uh, a year and a half ago. He came to one of my shows and we hung out. He loved you. He loved me Fuck. and you. That we, we ran that club, you and me. The, the locals <laughs> used to get pissed. They were like, fucking these Yankees headline. And we would go hey. down there and destroy that fucking room. Dude, that that room, the Houston, the laugh stop. The laugh stop. He, he ran it. I mean, he was a fucking nutcase too. I loved him. Oh my god, he would drink those Jaegers. He would do a bottle of Jaeger a night. We were doing over there a bottle of fucking Jaeger. We were doing. Yeah, there was always that moment where you fucking fucking with him, but where he looks at you and that fucking scar in his, you're like, ah, shit. He's about to fucking. He's about to cut my head off with something. Doug, but, uh, he would get fucked up with us. Those yeah, were some was, old school. That club was, uh, they never had another club like that. That no. Do you remember the open mics on Monday? They went till 2 in the morning and there'd be 300 people in there on a Monday night. I, yeah, I remember. I would go to that club. I would stay extra days. Me too. Yeah, you stayed. And I would, we, would, we would hook up the Xbox at like 2.30 in the morning in the main room, we'd hook up the Xbox and play Call of Duty until like 5. And I mean, I, I remember the fucking chicks were outrageous. Outrageous. I mean, outrageous. The, the girls that would come down to see the shows. Texas girls are different, man. They're, they're very sweet, nice. They're down to, to down to get funky, and they like to eat, which I like. They'd always be like, let's go get some food. And at like fucking three in the morning, you'd be eating like some chicken fried steak with eggs somewhere. The first time I played that club, I was a feature for Bobby Slayton. Ah, that's funny. I got in on a Wednesday night. I was fucking, I needed a line of Coke like you wouldn't fucking believe. And I didn't know nobody in Houston. And I'm sitting at the bar thinking about fucking, I'm going to have to get one of the dog guys to drive me to the hood and get some coke. And I see this beautiful girl. And she comes over to me and she goes, are you the comedian? Yes. And she's like, "I'm. are you Cuban? We started talking. She's Cuban. She's Colombian. I go, listen, I don't mean to insult you. Can you get a package? And she goes, yeah, my brother. What do you need? And she goes, I'm with my date, but... I'll drop them off and get you a package and bring it back. I thought she was bullshitting me. She showed up at the fucking room. Remember the old hotel? They had that before the hotel got washed out. Houston, the best thing about the laugh stop was they had a hotel that they put you at. 
and Willie Nelson had stayed there. Fucking every great country performer, every Jimi Hendrix had been there. Yeah. It was just that type of hotel. The doors didn't lock. All right. you had to do was go back to that hotel, grab a beer, and go out into the patio. And within five minutes, somebody would come to you, whether it was five in the morning <laughs> or four in the morning. There was always some lonely person in that hotel. And next thing you know, you were in their room snorting coke, <laughs> eating ass, fucking drinking, smoking pot. It was fucking tremendous. What a! I missed that club when it closed. Big. Time. I was there. I I went there and I middled for Dane when Dane was doing clubs. And I remember at the end of the weekend, he walked up to me. He's like, "Fuck, I, fuck him. I want you. I want you fucking back." And I was like, "Well, I, all right." He goes. You're a fucking headline here. I'm going to bring you back three times a year. You're going to fucking build up a fan base, and you'll fucking sell this place out. And that's exactly what he did. He built a fan. That's what clubs, some clubs suck because they won't give you the shot to build a fan base. He would bring me back three times a year, and I would just murder every time. And he built this fan base up around me, and then they just started coming. So when I first went, it was good. Second time, it was great. The third time, fourth time, it was just fucking sold out, lying out the door, and he built that around me as like one of his his guys. But it's I never crazy, stayed in that hotel. I made him put. I like. A, I'm a boutique guy. I like a boutique hotel. I like a little boutiquey downtown. You know what I mean? Weird fucking bed, a fucking huge pillow with some weird shit on it. You know, maybe a kooky chair. He used to so. put us up at the Intercontinental for a while after that hotel went down. Because that hotel died in the flood. Right. So then he would put you up at the Intercontinental Hotel. And one night, Felipe went down there. <laughs> and when Felipe was fucking crazy, like 2004, 2005, Felipe went down there oh. and had a party in his room. And they lit the curtains on fucking fire and shit. <laughs> and fucking, I get a call from Pete on Monday, like, Joey, what the fuck is going on with this kid? He lit the curtains on fire. You know, it was it was a tremendous fucking story. And I heard that he was up all night, and he went to the open mic and just leveled the fucking open mic. Pete was like, boy, he was fucked up, but he went up there, and the drugs went away. He just leveled that fucking room. It was such a great room, man. Yeah. It was it a was great so room. I got to actually, I think it's, I got the audio somewhere. I snapped one of my, you know, I I don't snap too much on today, but I fucking snapped a couple times. The audio is on the internet somewhere, but I was in there. I did my first album, my first Robert Kelly Live, my first CD. I did at that club. Pete, Pete was like, "Fuck it," because nobody would give me a shot. He's like, "Just fucking do it here." He put the CD recorder in there for me, so that I could do my album. He went and pay, paid the fucking money, had him hook it up. And hooked Mike the crowd. And I think it was the last night, this little cocksucker in the front row, just fucking arms crossed. Like, it's almost like he came to let me know, fuck, I don't like you. 